acceptance of information regarding how drainage would be affected given the change to uh, the site and the construction of the garage. Uh, the town engineer's uh, suggestion to, as he said, revisit or review the location of the garage is something that uh, we will be doing. Uh, at, we do not have information other than the original stormwater report, which was done in 1991 for the conversion to the community center, uh, which uh, reference the need for two 18-inch culverts, uh, analyzed the watershed, uh, and ran a theoretical calculation of 16 cubic feet per second in a 25-year storm. Uh, however, the, uh, the actual functioning of those culverts, we have not, uh, we, we were not aware that the garage, that the silted area from those culverts uh, was as large as it is. Uh, and we do not have documentation at this point in time of what the actual flows are out of those pipes. So, so therefore, we will be reviewing that inf information also and deciding what the impact would be there. Uh, the, the flows in that area are uh, probably not as uh, of, of the magnitude that was envisioned in the 1991 stormwater report. Uh, the area is uh, still functioning even though the uh, culverts under the road are half clogged right to the midpoint uh, with sand and silt. Uh, the, uh, the volume of water uh, that was envisioned in that report uh, does not seem to be flowing through there. There is no uh, significant erosion uh, being created. However, there seems to be a slow flow of silt coming uh, from the property uh, to the west uh, from their dirt, dirt parking lot. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the silted area is well away from the neighbor to the east's land, uh, and a moderate uh, impact to that silted area uh, probably could be accommodated, uh, but uh, we're not in a position to document exactly you know, how many gallons of water would be displaced or whatever at, at this time. Other questions on completeness? Barbara? Well, apparently, <clears throat> financial information hasn't been supplied, which is required with the application. Uh, yes, the financial information was, was presented two years ago. Uh, if anyone is interested in copies of that information, uh, it was a letter from the town manager. Uh, I have that with me tonight if you'd like to have it. Uh, however, uh, we could also, again, look at that also if you'd like. Mm -hmm. For instance, this is the new application. Does that have to be resubmitted? I, I would recommend, yes, that it be resubmitted. So it would have to be a new letter? Again, I would recommend it be a current letter. Yeah, I agree. And how about the elevation of the building on Shore Road? You haven't supplied the elevation facing Shore Road. Uh, correct, but it, 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 it would be easy to... I, I have a copy of that with me also tonight, if you'd be uh, interested in that also. Oh, see that? I have a copy of... There were two elevations that were on that sheet that did not get printed. Uh, the shore road elevation and the uh, existing side of the house. And I have one of them, the, the existing side of the house with me tonight, but not the other one. That could be a supply to that. Okay. 
Other questions? Jack? Um, I have a question relative to the completeness on the landscaping and buffering, uh, driven really mostly by the letter that was presented to the board tonight. Did you get a copy of the letter from Peter and Alex Rand? Uh, yes, about when, when we arrived this evening. Um, it certainly raises questions in my mind about what the actual intentions are as far as buffering. Uh, the intentions for buffering uh, were to uh, provide the buffering shown on the plan, uh, but at the same time, uh, what has what has come to light is that the the note that was on in the original approved plans, uh, which referred to the fact as the buffered area uh, would not be cleared except for diseased and dying. Uh, material uh, in, an, in an effort to uh, begin some site preparation, that dead and dying material has been removed along with uh, the material that is within the footprint of the building. Uh, so presumably uh, the buffering that was shown on the plans before and shown on the plans in this new application uh, would be provided. You've read the concern that the vast majority of the vegetation was removed was alive and well. Um, the, um, we could, uh, get uh, information uh, from the uh, landscaping people who performed the work. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of dead material and even some that's still there uh, is carpenter ant infested and not healthy. Well, would the, would the applicant consider if it was deemed that the buffering was not sufficient to add to the buffering that was necessary. Uh, yes, we could revisit the buffering plan, the plans for the buffering with, with the knowledge that there's less of the existing buffering there because it was diseased and dying. Right. That would be something that could be looked at. Other questions on completeness? Uh, I guess I, I would just ask, uh, I, I wouldn't have a problem deeming the application complete. On the other hand, I'm sure you would understand that, that in the information we've been discussing will, I'm sure, be provided before the next meeting so that we have it all. Yes. Um, so we don't hold things up. Barbara? Could we make them part of the condition of the application? Um, we have Maureen has lectured me many times yes. on not making conditions on completeness, and I do agree with her. So uh, I, I, the way I see it is that obviously for us to review the application, we would need that information. So I, we I'm, can... I, I guess I'm not prepared to do that yet. I guess I, guess I see too many outstanding issues for... Well, I, I think the financial conditions and the, the elevations are... Maybe even a little bit more detail on the landscaping plan. The buffering would be important. I agree. Well, then let's take a vote on completeness. And right. We'll see that. Yeah. Go right ahead. I'll make a motion. Make a motion uh, for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented. The application of Dr. Craig Johnson to construct a 1,543 square foot addition to the existing medical office building and two car garage located at 1226 Shore Road be deemed complete. All in favor? So that's this. I'm sorry. We need a second. Yeah, yeah I'll, sec I'll second it. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, three to two. So, do, do we need an affirmative motion now? All right, yeah. then I'll make that unless Dave wants to. 
I'll defer to you, Dave, if you want to, but I'll. I move that uh, based on the uh, plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Dr. Craig Johnson to, cr to construct a 1,543 square foot addition to the existing medical office building and two car garage located at 1226 Shore Road be deemed incomplete. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of that motion? Opposed? Three to two. What a surprise. <laughs> okay. Motion's deemed incomplete. Um, still need to table it. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Request um, the board's intelligence. I thought the package that you received this evening of correspondence would include a letter from the town attorney. Um, he reviewed the open space zoning amendment. And he had one comment, and that be that um, at the end of the, at the the last sentence in the paragraph, that we add three words, and I'd be happy to share that with you. Uh, the last sentence says, no phase of development shall be constructed until a final plan for that phase, demonstrating full compliance with the subdivision ordinance. Okay. I apologize for not having that tonight. Okay. For that phase? For that phase. That's after the word compliance? It's um, after the words final plan, before the word demonstrating. Okay. Um, just to remind the multitudes that are here, this is scheduled for public hearing this evening. Um, this is a uh, referred to us by the town council to consider an amendment to the zoning ordinance that would allow phased conceptual plans for open space zoning subdivisions. Uh, Maureen, I guess for the record, if you can just briefly summarize the reasoning behind the request and uh, what we're going to consider tonight. Certainly. Uh, for most subdivisions in town, uh, a property owner can choose to develop a portion of their land and reserve the remaining land for whatever, future development, their own lot. Um, if you're in the RB district, however, you must comply with the cluster zoning provisions. And the cluster zoning provisions have not only a minimum lot size requirement, but an average lot size requirement. So if you reserve a portion of your land for development and you leave a large chunk un undeveloped, you can't meet the average lot size requirement. It skews the, the average beyond what you can meet uh, the town's ordinance under. So what this does is it, it provides to people who have property in the RB district the same opportunity that people have in other districts to develop a portion of their property um, and still reserve the remaining portion for future development. It also protects the town by requiring that they have to do a concept level design so that we know that the way they're reserving their future land provides them for an opportunity to develop it in conformance with our standards in the future. So it doesn't require the, the owner to go through the, the financial burden of fully designing the entire property 
but it does require some concept level work so there's some reassurance that if they ever come back in for a project that they could meet our standards. Okay. Well, let me uh, open the public hearing just for the record. Uh, public hearing is now open. Uh, don't see anyone that, unless you would like to speak. <laughs> Take all the time you want. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, and I'm here on behalf of uh, uh, Steve, Pat, and Robert Bothell of Ocean House Road. Um, as we stated in our letter uh, to the town, which I believe helped to initiate this text amendment, um, the Bothells are in the process of estate planning, which includes the master planning of their uh, 14 and a half acres of land off Ocean House Road. And uh, I have reviewed this uh, proposed language with the Bothells, um, and they fully support uh, the text amendment as stated. Um, and this will, when adopted, if and when the, this is adopted, it will allow uh, the Bothells to go forward with their estate planning and master planning of their land without uh, fully finalizing a design for this for the land. In other words, they could they could show future development and label it as such. So um, we would encourage the, uh, the planning board to give a favorable recommendation to the council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Okay, with that, we'll close the public hearing. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'm, I'm hard pressed to understand any rationale for not adopting this, I guess. I don't know if anyone. <laughs> well, um, th there was, Maureen, if you remember, there was a slight concern about, remind me, that, that if the future development didn't conform with the initial plan that had already been approved. I, the only risk I see to this is for someone to uh, chop up their property in an in, in inadvisable way and such that they would come back for the later phase and find themselves unable to meet our requirements. Um, but I think that the concept level plan requirement really protects you from yeah. that happening. How, how, would, how would that happen? I, I mean, I guess somebody just botched it somehow. And, and I don't know. I guess you, you might have a shot at a variance, given those parameters. But if it was self-created, how do you do that? So. It's pretty narrow. I mean, I, you know, you asked me. I have to tell you what the risks are. I don't think that's a very big risk. I think sure. you've done everything you can to protect yourself from that, short of not allowing it at all. Which is where we're at right now, effectively. So I mean, we're opening the door if somebody sort of stumbles through it. I guess you can't help them. Right. I, I mean, I. Um, I certainly see the utility in, you know, sometimes we forget that it's a fairly significant cost to come before this board and present plans and meet all the requirements. And I think Mr. Mitchell has done a good job of describing the, the pitfalls where you don't want to develop the entire portion at at once, but under the existing procedure, you still have to address the entire portion, and that's maybe something you would rather wait to do and also wait to spend the money on. So I, I certainly can see why this idea has some, has some merit. And I would also endorse the change made by the town attorney. Uh, when we vote on this, but I think it makes sense. Any other comments, questions? Maureen, just uh, curious if you see other potentials for lots of this type in the town. I think they're, all of the RV lots are large lots. So 
I think there is definitely potential for other property owners in the RB district to take advantage of this, especially people who, you know, farming families are an excellent example, people who may need to do a small development but don't want to propose a development over their, the entire property that they own. One more question. The, 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 the term concept level plan, is this it? This is it. So we're not, we don't have a set of regulations on concept level plan. Yeah, I don't, I didn't think so. What, what you, this, the proposed amendment is what's reflected in the attached with the addition from the town. Attorney. Right. I'm just curious what level of detail. I mean, the, part of the point of this exercise is to cut down the expense for someone who wants to develop a chunk. They need full engineering on that, but for the whole parcel, they have to do. They have to provide some sort of minimum oh, oh, level of data yeah. for us to consider. And my question was, what level of data is that? I mean, and I, I'm asking Maureen, this is it. There's nothing else in the ordinance that describes in any level, any more level, what the term concept level is other than these. No. When, yeah, when I wrote the list, it was meant to be an exhaustive list. I think sure. that there might be a circumstance where the board might want to ask for something beyond what's specifically right. on this list. Right, and I see You would that. have to really find a good justification for it. I would it, think. It's going to be hard to make that, that argument. Given what we have here. Yes. And the we, intent was that that really is all you need. And I have actually have spoken to Mr. Mitchell about this, and, and he feels that that level of, of information is a reasonable amount to sure. have a family that otherwise wouldn't want to be proposing development of their property be able to provide. So we're trying to strike a balance between <coughs> spending the money of, of private property owners and, and protecting sure. the town's interests. And that protects the owner, too, because they'll have a blueprint for, the, for, for going forward. Right. They'll know what they've got. Would anyone like to make a motion? I would. Nope. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I have a motion from the board, sir. Be it ordered that based on the information submitted and the facts presented, the open space zoning amendment, section 19-7-2B, to allow phasing of developments with submission of a concept plan be recommended to the town council for adoption. Appending those three words, right, that, that we... Appending the adoption, the inclusion of the three words recommended by town council. Town attorney. The, the town you. attorney, not the council. Yeah, not the council. <laughs> Town's attorney uh, recommended that the word three words for that phase be inserted right at the end of the sentence ending with open space. Good. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. I, I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs> that was quick. <laughs>